Yes, we finally made it to Bug Type Moves Explained, and that isn't excitement, it's uh, <laughs> it's withheld paranoia. Bugs are icky. And I'm sure I'm going to love having to watch this video as much as you guys are, but hey, I do it for those of you who do enjoy them buggos. I just hope I don't get skeeved out within the first few minutes. Okay, so real talk right now, bugs are mega evolved creatures. They are the perfect niche creature. Every single bug is able to do some sort of astounding thing. I mean, they've all had like a Brazilian years to become what they are or something, and now they have like sci-fi abilities. And as such, in Pokemon, Bug type moves are just as crazy, if not crazier, because you get to apply some fantasy. But bugs make up in technology for what they lack in power and size, which is why most bug type moves we're going to see are well below the average power for Pokemon. I mean, it is just bug after all. And we start with one of the oldest and most iconic bug type moves, Leech Life. Oh, wait a minute, are leeches bugs? Hang on, hang on, let me check that real quick. Oh no, they are! It turns out, leeches are basically worms. Just, just wormies with teeth. Ick! I always thought they were some sort of weird eel fish. That was wrong. And who wants to look at footage of this? Ugh. Well, the move Leech Life is good then. The user drains the target's blood. The user's HP is restored by half of the damage taken by the target. Because that's basically what leeches do. Pin Missile is where sharp spikes are shot at the target in rapid succession. Well, plenty of bugs are sharp and prickly, but I'm sure they can't actually shoot their spikes like a projectile. Oh, they can. Oh! Gosh, another reason to stay inside forever. There's even a tarantula that can do this. <laughs> With Twin Needle, the user damages the target twice in succession by jabbing it with two spikes. This may also poison the target. This is pretty par for the course in terms of bug-like behavior. Always trying to ruin your day. And I mean, if they're gonna stab you, they might as well stab you again. It's rather rude, but they are bugs after all. It's just in their nature. Along with poisoning you, bugs are rather small, and thus for defense, or even sometimes for hunting, they require help by breaking the international laws of the Geneva Convention. Jokes aside, many bugs actively use venoms to help with their escape or in capturing prey. Fell Stinger, also known as Finishing Stinger in Japanese, is a stinging attack where, if the user knocks out the target with the move, its attack stat rises dramatically. So it's basically a finisher move. It's wonderful for ending fights. Lunging is a normal thing to do when you have a stabbing or piercing weapon. It's a common move taught in swordplay. The Pokemon move Lunge has the user lunge at the target, attacking with full force, lowering the target's attack. Stat. So why is this bug type? Well, what natural creature actually has a stabbing implement? Bugs! Right! Proboscises! Pr Proboscai, pr br 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 uh, stabby mouths, mosquitoes, moths, etc. This could also explain why it lowers the target's attack. It's sucking out some of their muscly energy. And in the case of Buzzswole, it's keeping that muscly energy for itself. String shots next. We all know that spiders, heck even caterpillars, are able to secrete a sticky string that they use for, well, a lot of stuff. From webs to just sort of hanging out. It's pretty useful and strong, which is why the opposing Pokemon becomes bound with silk blown from the user mouth that harshly lowers its speed stat. The only odd thing is that Pokemon shoot it from their mouths or head horns instead of their butt. I guess that's to protect innocent eyes from sticky white butt string. Another sticky move is Sticky Web. The user weaves a sticky net around the opposing team, which lowers their speed stat upon switching into battle. Now you'd think in a realistic sense, the opposing trainer just wouldn't let their Pokemon out on the battlefield right on the web, you know? What a stupid game. And then there's Spider Shot. Basically the same thing again in what it is, but is different in how it do. The user ensnares the target with a thin, gooey silk so that it cannot flee from battle. Now then, we have cutting moves. These moves seem to use the bug's hardened carapace or exoskeleton like a blade. There's Furry Cutter. The Fury Cutter. Ah uh, yes the best move to spam. The target is slashed with scythes or claws. This attack becomes more powerful if it hits in succession. The more you use it, the better it gets. And I mean, who doesn't like slicing into their foes with a giant bug's razor-sharp carapace shaped like a scythe, huh? How a weasel is able to learn it, I'll never know. X-Scissor is where the user slashes at the target by crossing its scythes or claws as if they were a pair of scissors, much like the leaf cutter ant, who uses its large mandibles to actually cut the leaves into a more manageable size. That way, it can carry it back to the nest to feed bacteria, so that it can then eat the byproduct of that bacteria. They are little farmers. 
It's super cute, or at least as cute as an ant in a farmer hat and overalls could be. Mega Horn has the Pokemon use its tough and impressive horn. The user rams into the target with no let up. It was at one point the signature move of Heracross, the Rhino Beetle or Hercules Beetle, you know, the ones with the big ol' horn. However, nowadays, pretty much anything with a big ol' horn is able to use the move, so it's not that you need a bug horn to do it, it's just that bug horns are, well, really large in proportion to the rest of the body. Signal Beam isn't really a bug move? Is it not? More non-bugs learn it than bugs. The user attacks with a sinister beam of light, which may also confuse the target. In order to figure out why this light is bug type, we have to look at its origins. Back in Ruby and Sapphire, it was the signature move of Volbeat, though later in the same generation, Dugong could also learn it in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Well, regardless, so to give Volbeat a stab bonus with it, it gets the bug typing. And it could be easily explained as, it's a beam of light made in the same way fireflies make light via a chemical process. These insects use light signals to talk and communicate with others, as well as to confuse any predators, hence it doing the same in Pokemon. Tail Glow is basically another signature move of Volbeat. It stares at flashing lights to focus its mind, drastically raising its special attack stat. Again, it's a firefly thing. Another set of signature moves are the three moves known by only Vespaquin, the Queen Bee Pokemon. With attack order, she calls out her underlings to pummel the target. Critical hits land more easily. This is a perfect example of how insects can often win thanks to sheer numbers. Vespaquin commands others to do the work for her, and in this case, the order is to attack. And when there's a swarm of little attacks all over you, odds are at least one of them is going to strike a critical spot, hence the crit rate. Defense order is the same basic principle. Vespaquen commands her underlings to shield her body, which plenty of bee colonies have been observed doing to protect the more vulnerable members, like the queen. And then again, she has heal order. All the little bees work together to heal the leader. You know, this seems super unfair. Aren't you only allowed to have one Pokemon per opponent? How come Vespaquen gets like a hundred plus underlings? Are these just normal bees? Are these calm bees? Does the Pokemon world have normal bees? These don't look like combis. I have so many questions. Questions that only continue to get more question filled when we look at the move infestation. The user summons several teeny tiny insectoid things that infest the opponent for a number of turns. It's like a literal ton of fleas. So hang on a minute. Are these just fleas or what? Are there regular bugs in the Pokemon world? Ugh. Maybe the Japanese name of the move can enlighten us. Matawaritsuku. Probably mispronouncing that since I didn't even try. Depending on the context, this could translate into a few different things, like to follow about, to coil about, to stick together, or infestation. Well, great, that doesn't really help. And they all just sort of mean the same thing. So, the move infestation works this way. In some way or another, hundreds of tiny insects, question mark, Pokemon, question mark, essence of bug, question mark, things go all over the enemy. Like a flea ridden in Stray Doggo, it does damage over time. So now from a move that makes me question everything about the Pokemon world, to one that is about as basic as can be. We have Bug Bite, where, you guessed it, the user, which is a bug, bites. Kinda like a bug would, bug bites hurt. Though, this move also has the added effect of, if the target is holding a berry, the user eats it and gains its effect. If picnic ants have taught us anything, it's that bugs love to steal your food. This is because they lack the social concept of property. Now, picture this. It's summer, in a slice of life anime. We cut to a stock illustration of a building, maybe there's also a tree. Can you hear it in your mind? Can't you just hear this image in that context? That's because the cicadas are one million decibels and they are just screaming at the world looking for someone to In Pokemon, this is the move Bug Buzz. The user generates an ear-shattering sound wave by vibration, which may also lower the target's special defense stat. Because special defense is sanity in a way, and they drive you nutty with their annoying buzz. It bugs me so much sometimes. That was a pun. Now on to Struggle Bug, the move that's somehow better than struggle. While resisting, the user attacks the opposing Pokemon. This lowers the special attack of those hit. You see, it lowers their spark because they feel bad. The poor little bug that they're fighting is struggling. I mean, you can't just not take sympathy on something so much smaller than you trying its best to beat you. It's almost endearing. Now, you know what I like butterflies and moths. Especially when you disregard butterflies that only look at moths. 
I like moths. And there are a bunch of bug type moves regarding the abilities of butterflies and moths, such as Silver Wind, where the target gets attacked with powdery scales blown by the wind. This may also raise the user's stats. It turns out that moth and butterfly wings are actually made of tiny little scales, which is what the Pokemon throws, and the shedding of all those old scales could possibly help them on in battle, hence the stat increase. Makes them more agile, I suppose. Quiver Dance is another butterfly move. In fact, in Japanese, the move is called Butterfly dance, which is why, again, it's learned primarily by butterfly-like Pokemon. The user lightly performs a beautiful, mystical dance. This boosts the user's special attack, special defense, and speed stats. Butterflies in cultures across the globe are seen as mystical, beautiful symbols of hope, as well as new life and energy. So this power is innate to them. Rage Powder has the user scatter a cloud of irritating powder to draw attention to itself. Opponents aim only at the user. You see, bugs are masters of chemical warfare, especially hormones, and when dealing with the fantasy world of Pokémon, you can easily say, it's a powder that really bugs the enemy. <laughs> The move Powder is extremely nondescript. Like, what sort of powder? Because the world is filled with a lot of powers of varying use and importance, and its Japanese name is just Dust. Well, at least we know it's a combustible powder, because this signature move of Avillion will explode when it comes into contact with fire, dealing extra damage to the target. Moths and butterflies are often associated with Dust, because again, they're scaly wings, but also because some of them basically eat it and get covered in it, and Dust, when accumulated enough is quite flammable because fire burns using oxygen and fuel. The tiny dust particles burn up almost instantly because of their high ratio of surface area to volume. So the fire spreads quickly and creates a vacuum or a flash which then spreads the fire much quicker. And you're welcome for that long explanation of an almost useless move. Here's something a lot of bugs are famous for, being skittish. And for good reason. When you are the size of a grain of rice, the world is just a mega death world. Anything can kill you. Thus the move U-turn is bug. After making its attack, the user rushes back to switch places with a party Pokemon in waiting. It's scared. It's gotta get away. Steam Roller has the user crush its targets by rolling them over with its rolled up body. Fun fact, if the target had ever used Minimize, then this attack would do double damage. Makes sense, because squish. And if not for the existence of Golem, this Gen 5 move would be the signature move of the Whirlipede line. But speaking of signature moves, Pollen Puff. Signature move of Ribombi. I love it. It attacks the enemy with a pollen puff that explodes, though you can also target an ally with it, and then the pollen puff restores HP instead. Being pollen, shouldn't this move be grass type? Meaning not bug? Pollen is just plant spunk. Huh. Well, insects famously use it all the time, like bees. It's super nutritious, so healing from it is an easy connection to make. As for the exploding, well, Little do many know that Ribombi has bomb in the name for a reason. It can make bombs out of pollen, because Sun and Moon was a hilarious anime. Now, there's just one more move, and it kind of doesn't have the best reasons for being bug type, and that move is First Impressions, the signature move of Golisopod. Though through breeding, a far-fetched can also learn this. The heck? Well, this move is strong, but it can only be used on the first turn the user is on the battlefield. And the real reason it's bug type is just so that it gets a stab bonus from the Golisopod. Though I suppose, since it's depicted as sort of a generic slam, you are being slammed by an exoskeleton, which is quite bug-like, I suppose. But other than that, it's not exactly buggish. Unless you base the whole move on some context, like Picture this. Just after you get out of a shower or turn on your bedroom light, you are greeted by a HORRIFIC INSECT MONSTROSITY! Your first impression is one of fear, though once you calm yourself down and are aware of it being there and what it is exactly, you're... <sighs> you're pretty much fine and can take care of it. Golisopod takes this fear and makes full use of it with its first impression. Nice. Oh, oh no, I forgot the Z-move. Savage Spinout, the generic bug type Z-move, binds the target with full force with threads of silk that the user spits using its Z power. So uh, apparently, all bugs are able to use silk. Though funnily enough, String Shot isn't one of the moves that can become this Z-move. <laughs> Silly bugs. So is white goopy stringy silk just innate to the essence of bugs? I guess so. It's odd. So odd. But there you have it. Every bug type Pokemon move explained. Hope you learned something today. So save that right into your noggin. And see ya on the next one.